So hello, welcome to the Arcus Musing channel. My name is Ben Musing and today I'm going to tell you this about the story of the Musing Barrys. Um, sounds a little funny, right? Um, yeah, I'm the inventor and founder of the company called Arcus, which a lot of people in this violent world already know for a long time. We're around for almost 20 years now. And um, initially we had started uh, with the idea of making a very affordable, high quality bow. And it turned out that the Arcus bow can be an excellent bow, but well, affordable, it can be cheap. It's very, very labor intense to make and uh, requires a lot of expensive um, materials and machinery and all that. So we, and, and for 20 years, we struggled in, in, in making a lower priced version of it and it never really succeeded. And um, for the same time, we've always been asked by our customers if we can't make a student level, amateur level bow, second um, bow, backup bow at a lower price point, which would also be very good. And the answer was, um, sorry to say, but the answer was no, we can't, we couldn't. No, we can't. Something has changed. Something very important has changed. Technology has advanced. Today, there is a new class of materials and a new process that allows us to rethink all we've done um, on Valimbos. So carbon fiber technology, um, making composite bows, that's, that's a relatively new technology. It's a new class of materials and it's developing fast and new, new stuff is coming up. And we discovered um, four or five years ago that something very interesting is happening. And that is uh, called um, uh, resin injection molding and that's a process which is completely different from our pre preg hand lamination process that we're using for the Arcus bow. There's a downside to it. It is the process is even more difficult from the technology standpoint and we don't achieve quite as low a resin content as with the Arcus bow. The thing with the Arcus bows is that um, in the stick, uh, it, it's really almost pure carbon. So if you look at it, if you touch it, what you see, what you feel is carbon fiber. It's only like 20% of epoxy that holds the fibers in place. And that's fantastic for the resonance quality. So the Velocity of sound is much faster than in any wood bow. It speaks more easy. It has more power than a wooden bow, uh, but it, it sure comes at a price. Um, so on the other hand, what we found is when we cut up some American or Chinese or whatever low tech carbon fiber bows, what you find inside is not very pretty and it correlates with the sound quality of these more simple carbon fiber bows, which also don't sound very pretty. So that was not an option. So that's either low tech or high cost. And now what became possible with the resin injection uh, molding is we could actually start working on continuous fibers. So fibers that would not be cut up some places or laminated, but endlessly woven. And this is a cut up uh, musing bow. And uh, as you can see from the inside and from the outside, um, it's a very clean weave and there's no excess of resin or any folds or whatnot. It's a very pure and simple um, material similar to a unique beautiful piece of Pernambuco maybe. 
So what I told you about the downside, we have to put in a little more resin. So the resin content of such a stick would be around 40%. So 20% it was with the Arcus bow, 40% in this new class of bow. While in a, in a low end carbon fiber bow, the resin content is actually like 60%. So there is more resin in the bow than actually carbon fiber. Um, so you can you can see that I mean the, the carbon fibers are kind of like hidden in a lot of plastic and what this plastic or this epoxy or whatever it is what this does is it kills the overtones the high frequency range is like cut off almost that's why they all sound kind of dull we don't want any of that we want at least the same sound spectrum as in a Pernambuco bow and Surprise, surprise, that's pretty much exactly what we get with this new material and this new process. As I told you, its technology, its technology is, is very, very difficult to master. So it took us like three years from the first idea to a um, ready-made uh, bow. But the result is really amazing. And it came out even better than we had hoped for. Um, the good news, the very good news, is that we were able to reduce production costs by around 50% compared to the to the Orcus bow. So it's a lot a lot less labor intense, and also the material are a lot a little bit cheaper. Um, so we were able to cut some some costs along the way, and and um, we find it's still not a cheap bow. I have to admit. But it's very affordable for advanced player, for advanced students, for every serious um, second or backup bow for professional players. It's a fantastic, fantastic product. What we also did is we applied all the things we have learned about the Arcus bows and the when it, you know, when we talk about bows, where things are getting really, really tricky, is is the curve and uh, the graduation of the stick. And again, this is with a hollow stick as we make them, and with a woven fiber, it's entirely different from a wooden bow. So copying a wooden bow from its dimension and then turning that into a carbon fire bow really won't get us a very nice playable bow. So we really have to understand what these fibers are doing and, and how the distribution of mass and elasticity um, along the stick evolves uh, by changing the diameters um, and the angle of the fiber and, and the curve, last not least the curve. And we were very, very um, cautious about this design and our goal was to make a bow that plays as natural and as easy as any possible. And I can say it worked out really, really well. And if it hadn't, I would I might not have given it my name possibly, <laughs> but called us called it the whatnot bow. But no, I'm really, really proud on this development and decided to 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 put my own name on it um, and I completely stand behind it. And although it's a lesser prized bow than the Arcus bow, actually when I play quartet and I play viola on the quartet. I mostly use my musing bow. Um, I love my Arcus bow. It's faster, it's more powerful, but the musing bow is really so easy to use and makes it really, really uh, easy to play what you want to play. All right, and while we were at finishing the design and the development of the bow, another idea came up and I was, I was entertaining this idea for a long time. And we were actually using stainless steel on some other bows already for these windings here. The windings um, are a contact point, constant contact point, and when you use silver, it often blackens over time. When you use um, nickel silver, it gets dull and you can't really polish it up. 
And we experimented with stainless steel for a little while and it turned out to work really, really well. And from this experience, um, we asked ourselves if it might be possible to use stainless steel also for the ferrule, for the underslide. And it turned out it is. Um, it was not easy, especially the ferrule was quite a bit of a project. Um, but now we're proud to say that we have the, we're the first makers in this world to make a stainless steel outfit on a boat. We also uh, have a very interesting little button here, um, which provides a lot of, a lot of grip. Um, so even when your fingers are slippery a little bit, um, or on the cello bow, which sometimes tighten a little stiff. So that turns out really, really smooth. What we also took over from the Arcus bows is the metal bearings that we have inside, at the front and at the end, um, which provides the bow with an everlasting and very easy, easy action. So um, yeah, uh, we didn't stop uh, at, the, at the stick, but decided to make it a perfect all-round bow if we could. And um, yeah, and, and then last not least, um, of course, one of the things we're very proud upon is we do understand not only violin bows, but viola and cello and even double bass bows in all their physics. So what we do is we don't just um, use the same recipe that we've developed for a violin bow and then apply that to the other categories, um, but we de develop every model um, individually and, and have to, to provide you with the perfect, the best possible playing properties and of course the right sound. So the violin, viola and cello bows are on, on sale for a little over a year now and the double bass bows are coming next and we'll talk, uh, I'll, I'll, make a, I'll make a special video about bass bows because that's a fascinating topic. Um, but for now, uh, this shall be it for the introduction of the Musing Bows and hope to see you soon. Um, please share and like and um, yeah, hope to see you soon again. Thank you and goodbye.